Right. So, all right. It's about that time, three o'clock. Welcome everyone who's watching or who joined in on the uh, on the chat. Uh, my name's Adam. This is Break the Walls Down, Reimagine Images. So, um, you couldn't already tell. I'm pretty much a. Uh, I do like professional wrestling. You might recognize this the Chris Jericho silhouette there in the <laughs> in this uh, slide. So, we're gonna talk about. Uh, Take a look at image, the kind of bucking the trend of traditional use of images in the classroom um, using some of the tech tools that I've uh, been using over the last couple of years. So just some of my ideas. Hopefully you uh, can glean something from here and synthesize it and make your own version of it. So again, right here. Again, my name is Adam. I'm a technology integration coach uh, at from the Cutler Rossi Joint Unified School District. Out in Central California, for if you don't know exactly where that's at, we're about right in the middle of the state. Uh, I'm about um, we're about half uh, halfway between uh, Fresno and Visalia. It's very rural. Um, this is not the California. If you're not from California, this is not California you think of on TV. This is not the uh, the celebrities and the palm trees and beaches of of LA or the glitz and glamour of uh, the Bay Area. This is, uh, if you're from the Midwest, you would think that you're still in the Midwest. It's very rural. Uh, the uh, schools that I serve, which is El Monte Middle School and the Rossi High School, we're about 95% uh, uh, Hispanic. Uh, the other is about uh, four and a half percent uh, Filipino. And I can probably count all the white students I've had over the years on two hands. That's the kind of population I serve. Uh, most of my students are English learners. So uh, some of these ideas were designed with their learning needs in mind. Um, you can connect with me on Twitter and Instagram, and my handle is at techcoachwattis. Um, don't be, don't feel afraid, be afraid to butcher my last name. It wasn't until I started working out in Arosi that um, I got used to hearing my name pronounced correctly. So it's, uh, it's actually a lot easier to pronounce than it looks. But yeah, don't feel feel free to, to chime in uh, whenever you get a chance. Uh, you can email me at, at um, my email address, uh, uh, golwattis14 at gmail.com. Um, so Twitter is probably the best way to get a hold of me. I'll respond the quickest there. But uh, you have uh, Twitter, Instagram, uh, G, uh, email. Um, I will respond uh, as quickly as possible. So um, a lot of the ideas that I'm going to share with you for this are part of my Cardinal Innovation Center um, project. The Cardinal, uh, the Cardinal is the logo for the, our Rossi High School, and the Cardinal Innovation Center is a physical and virtual learning space that's student-centered and um, designed to really uh, get students creating content instead of consuming it. And I've uh, recently uh, been uh, honored to announce that I've been part that this project has uh, been accepted to the uh, Sydney, Australia Google Certified Innovator Academy coming up in a few weeks. So. I'm going to be hopping on a plane, heading down under for three days of some intense learning and collaboration to really synthesize and crystallize my thinking for this project. So the ideas in this session that I'm going to share with you uh, come pretty much directly out of that project. So that project has a lot of stuff to it, a lot of uh, layers to it. So I'm just taking certain layers out of it. And I'm going to focus on those for this session. So. Again, why well, start every session or even the first day of school when I'm in the classroom with talking a little bit about me? Now, it's not me being narcissistic, but in my experience, I I learned from teachers and presenters who shared part of their life with me, and I found a way to connect with them. So a little bit of background, some method behind my madness. Um, uh, I'm the proud father of these three little angels here. Uh, we have Ashley on the left, who, who's six. Ariel in the middle who just turned five last week, and all over on the right we have my youngest daughter Andrina, who will be four in a few weeks, uh, in about three or four weeks. So yeah, I have my hands full with these three little girls, love them to death. They are my pride and joy. Um, we are affectionately known as the A Team because all of our names have are beginning with the letter A. I actually have that A Team logo tattooed on my left shoulder. So if I ever see you in real life, uh, ask to, I have no problem showing it off. Um, 
My mentor, my idol is uh, Sir Alex Ferguson. You see the gif of him in between my first two daughters. Uh, Sir Alex Ferguson was the uh, legendary coach of my favorite soccer team, um, Manchester United. He's arguably the greatest coach in sports history. Uh, go ahead and Google him. Uh, it'd be hard to disagree with that, but again, that's an argument for another day. But a lot of Sir Alex's uh, philosophies and the way he learned from other um, great leaders and coaches and teachers, etc., and he put those those philosophies to work and to create his own has uh, been very inspiring to me. Um, I am a child of the '80s, so I'm a big He-Man dork. A lot of my, uh, a lot of I do a lot of He-Man references in my classroom and on my uh, my website, techcoachbodies.com. You'll see some He-Man references. But I've always been intrigued by the way uh, He-Man's sort of power transformed him from the meek Prince Adam to the most powerful man in the universe. That transformation of becoming better it's always really resonated with me so i brought that try to incorporate that into my teaching um i am probably the world's foremost expert on uh fresno state football uh if you don't, if you don't know much about fresno state football i know virtually everything about it probably because my dad was the equipment manager for uh 20 years there and my whole childhood was in the locker room with all the football players and in which one of the nfl even won super bowls so it's it's near very near and dear to my heart um, and lastly, I'll leave you with this, that I'm a proud uh, alumnus of Fresno Pacific University. I earned my degree in history, my teaching credential, and I played on the soccer team. So, again, that's just me in a nutshell. And uh, hopefully uh, you can identify with me one way or another, and we can continue this uh, learning journey. So, again, uh, please share all your learning here on social media uh, using the, uh, for, first and foremost, the uh, the ECG 2017 uh, hashtag for this event, this great event uh, put on by some really great educators. Um, and CB Tech Talk, that's uh, my hashtag that uh, my esteemed colleague, um, Catherine Goyet and I have created to really build connections between the, the rural schools and towns out here in the Central Valley of California. So we all know what, it gives us you a platform to share the great things that you're doing. And really we can collaborate and work together on getting better. Um, Originally, CB Tech Talk was just here. We designed it here for the Valley, but uh, to our delight, it's kind of gone across the world. We have regular, actually more regulars who join in this chat every Wednesday, 7 p.m. Pacific, where we're talking uh, pedagogy and technology. Um, we have people from across the world who are regulars, across the, from the East Coast, Midwest, Alaska. We have people join in from Israel before. That was surreal. Um, from, from Australia, New Zealand, uh, Hong Kong, Singapore, even I think believe Ireland and Spain have chimed in. So we didn't expect that, but it was uh, very, it's very, very welcomed. So please, uh, you, if anything that that resonates with you, or if you want me to uh, connect with you somehow, use the CV Tech Talk hashtag. Um, I monitor that religiously, and I will get to you uh, as, um, as, soon as, as soon as I can. So look at the comments here. Peggy George, yes, that was Sir Alex Ferguson. He is my idol. He's my idol for, for, as a leader, you know, for me, it doesn't get much better than him. But yeah, uh, that was Sir Alex Ferguson. You have a very good eye. So um, I'm gonna leave here, right here, with a a, a link to a Padlet. If you wanna, if you're watching online right now, just uh, take out your phone. You wanna screen, uh, take a uh, uh, scan that QR code. It'll take you to a Padlet. Um, again, it's only a, it's only about an hour long session. Um, I can't get to all your questions. Uh, leave your, your notes, your ahas, comments, questions on the Padlet below, along with your contact information, and then I can uh, respond to you in a, in a timely fashion. So what can you expect from this session? Um, this session is a deviation from the traditional use of images and pictures. Um, we'll talk about Google Drawings, one of my favorite apps. Uh, pretty much it's like free Photoshop. And as, as you'll find out, a lot of the same things you can do on Google Drawings you can also do on um, Google Slides. So uh, go ahead and uh, <clears throat> take a look at those. We'll talk about some of the ideas that I've, I've kind of uh, <clears throat> started uh, implementing using Google Drawings and Slides. Um, I prefer Drawings, but if you're like on an iPad, uh, there's no Google Drawings app. So if you can't, if you don't have access to Drawings, Slides is a, it's a good, a kind of an iOS alternative. Um, I'm a big fan of Google Photos. Man, Google Photos has saved my my skin so many times. Um, 
We'll talk about how to use it with your students, but then again, just for your own personal use, uh, Google Photos is free, unlimited photo storage for you. And trust me, it is unlimited. I tested out that theory. Um, I have a friend of mine who uh, will go unnamed who uh, gets me access to uh, the MP3, MP4 files of entire Hollywood movies. So I get all these for free. So Google Photos uh, will, will for free store your images and videos you take with your mobile device. Or if you want to, you have them saved somewhere, you upload it into Photos, it's free storage. I have about close to 100 full-length movies on MP3, MP4 format. I said, let's see how unlimited this is. So I plugged in my portable hard drive to my laptop and started uploading these movies, entire full-length movies, to photos. And it took them. It took a while to upload them. Once they're there, I can go into photos from anywhere and stream those movies for free. So it is unlimited. The cool thing is, um, I have it set to back up on my phone. It doesn't matter if you have an Android or an iPhone. I'm not sure if it works on Windows phones, but from what I understand, Windows phones are, are dead now. But I won't go, I won't go into that. Um, you can set it to automatically back up your, your pictures every time that you take a take a picture. And we've all been there before. Especially if you have a 16 or 32 gig uh, phone, you're downloading an app or you want to take a video or a picture, and you run out of space. Google Photos, what I would do every night. I'll put my phone in for the night, go to my camera, my camera roll, a gallery, delete all, and one, I'll, <clears throat> first I check photos to see that they've been, they've been uh, backed up. Once I see that they've been backed up, I go to my gallery of camera roll and delete those files from my, from my, um, from my device, saving that memory. So it's, uh, it's really cool, uh, at least for, for a personal standpoint, but I'll show you also with students how to do virtual gallery walks. Um, and a few other ways to get kids collaborating using Google Photos. Um, one of the really cool things I've learned from a great educator out in the Midwest named Tara Martin is how to do book snaps. And I'll share with you just a little bit of uh, a link to some of the brain research behind using uh, Snapchat to really engage students with, uh, with reading and get them really encouraged to read more. And I've seen it by getting students doing book snap. You see them reading a lot. Their retention of what they read, their comprehension, does increase and you know your your engagement increases because oh I get to use Snapchat now. We all know kids love Snapchat. So we'll, we'll, we will talk about how I've incorporated that as well. I uh, want we'll to talk about how how uh, to engage students with sketch notes. Uh, another great educator out there, Sylvia Duckworth, she's a uh, for me she's the sketch notes guru and um, I'll show you how to kind of ways to get started with students taking uh, creating sketch notes. Uh, it's a good way to get students to reread. You may have students read something, have them read it again, and turn what they read into a sketch note. That's a good first step into getting them creating sketch notes. I'll share some resources that I have for teaching students how to to do sketch notes. And we'll uh, we'll finish off this uh, presentation talking about how to ways simple ways to get to take advantage of the webcam on your your iPad or your Chromebook or a laptop. Uh, ways to um, Incorporate that with things like Blogger and Google Docs and more. So first we'll start off here with Google Drawings. And again, virtually a lot of the same things you can do with drawings, you can also do on a uh, on Google Slides. So for first and foremost, I like to call this free, fo free Photoshop. Um, you see over here on the left, we have a, an image I created on drawings. Um, and it's actually a sticker that I made that I have it on my laptop and I give them out to, uh, to uh, people when I present. It's, called my, it's my, my Man United, hashtag Man United EDU sticker. Uh, just so you know, I, there's a quote that says, learning through the lens of Manchester United, my favorite team. Whenever I teach students a new, or teachers a new tech tool, I use Manchester United information um, as kind of like the, to, to teach them that, that tool. So um, just a little gimmick of mine, but I created a sticker. Yeah, you know, I, I went and got some uh, clip, free clip art, pasted it onto a little drawing. I, I superimposed my idol, Sir Alex Ferguson, his head onto that clip art drawing. I threw a little soccer ball in there. I put a, a kind of a clip art of a um, of the uh, of a chalkboard. Um, I used the text tool to type in the hashtag and the quote there, and even put nice. I stuck on there the. Uh, 
the, my favorite team, Manchester United, their their images, their their crest on there, all created for free using Photoshop. So you don't need to go out and pay for it. It's free through Google. So um, yeah, it's just you can get teaching students how to really use this tool. It's a great way for, to have them get creative to kind of kind of smash ideas together, really incorporate different ideas. Let, let them be creative. I would say if you want to teach them how to use this the first day, say, here, here's Google Drawings. Um, I would, I would give them a random number. But here, uh, take four or five things that you like and make like a, a graphic about it. And just let them have fun with it. And once they learn how to have fun, have fun with it, they'll, they'll develop that skill. And then when you want them to start using it for something academic, they have it. So it's a, it's a great little way to get started, just kind of just pasting pictures together and seeing what you can come up with. Um, a, uh, another great educator out there, Google Certified Innovator and uh, Trainer, Eric Kurtz, is a, wrote a great blog post about magnetic poetry. If you can create little lines and words on drawings that can be dragged and dropped anywhere on the, on the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, on the canvas there, and they can create poetry that way. It's a real cool little blog post. Um, if you go to my website, techcoachwaters.com, click on the Sessions tab, and you'll find the link to um, uh, Change Global 2017. You'll find this slide deck that I'm presenting from, and you can you can uh, have the slide deck and make your own copy of it. And all these links that are on this page, you click on them, and it'll take you to them. Um, so it's a good little resource for you to refer to. Um, I love the whole idea of, of dragging and dropping with um, Google, Google Drawings. Uh, you see I have a GIF up there showing you a, it's from a math class. So a little simple T-chart, quadrilaterals and other polygons, and you're going to match up uh, the names of the shapes as long as with the actual shapes themselves. So a little interactive way to give students um, a, pretty much a, that's a virtual manipulative. And this can easily be passed out to students using um, Google Classroom. You, you create the file. You, uh, you you disperse it through Google Classroom, a copy for each student, and they have their own copy. And then you can click on each student, see what they did, and review it. Completely paperless, and that may make your life a lot easier. Um, it's a great way, like I said earlier, to make infographics, diagrams, and puzzles. I have a few other little screenshots there of some images. Um, let's see. <laughs> Thank you, Peggy. Uh, I'm, I'm glad to be mentioned in the same breath as uh, uh, Eric Kurtz. Uh, he's a great guy. I got to meet him at ISTE. Actually, when I uh, presented for Google over there, I got to meet him in the room. It was a big moment for me. I took a selfie with him. Of course, I had to. It's kind of my thing. But yeah, um, Google Drive is a great way just to make infographics, diagrams, puzzles. For me, I used to, I remember when I was in class, when I was a kid, I, I didn't like making those posters. Teachers would say, here, go get a, a poster board, make a poster. I just felt like I was so limited. Google Drawings, your poster now becomes unlimited. You can put rich media in there. There's so many more things you can do with it than you could with a normal poster. If you're going to take a um, Google slide instead of drawings, you can do all these same things. Plus, you can drop some YouTube videos in there uh, uh, as well. And you use multiple slides onto one presentation. So it's um, it really takes that whole idea of a traditional student poster to a whole new level. So Google Drawings, check it out. If you have more questions about this, need some ideas, uh, just uh, go ahead and tweet me at TechCoachWattis. Let's see. So again, um, I'll briefly talk about this. Obviously, um, I, when I'm usually doing this face-to-face -face with people, uh, this is a challenge that I have. But it's um, again, this is Man United EDU. This is where I would have you kind of, kind of a sandbox activity. Um, but if you access this uh, slide deck through my, <coughs> through my website, um, Right there, it says click here. It'll take you to a, a Google Slides presentation where you would uh, do some dragging and dropping. Um, and it, it's a real cool little simple activity where it gets people collaborating and pretty practicing those dragging and dropping skills. I know out here in California, our Common Core aligned uh, state exam is called the CASP. And it requires students to have those skills to be able to drag and drop. And this is a simple way using slides or drawings. It, it'll work the same uh, for you to really get students practicing dragging and dropping. and it also increases some collaboration. So this is actually the um, <clears throat> that presentation here where you can practice the dragging and dropping. I'm a, yeah, I'm a big old 
Manchester United dork here. And uh, right now I'm going full screen, so you, you can't really see it. But I have on the side of the, the slide, you see the pictures, all 11 players on the field. So the idea of what would be for you to do is to have to go ahead and if you, you don't know the name of the players, you don't know their faces, you have to Google their names, find their pictures, and then drag them over the top of their name. So it's a simple little drag and drop tool. You can put kids in either individually, groups of two or three, have them work, work on it. Um, just a simple way to get started using these tools. Um, and it, it builds it builds the their hand eye coordination and their their ability to drag and drop um, on a on a Chromebook. Um, it can also be done on a uh, on an iPad as well. So again, some some of the skills that kids need, especially when it comes to our our uh, testing. So next year, we'll take a look here at Google Photos. Before I, um, <clears throat> before I move forward, let's take a look here. Hang out. Is anybody, let me check to see if there's anybody uh, actually watching on that version. So, um, yeah, before I move forward, does anybody want to? Ask some questions on the live hangout. Looks like we have Mary. I see that you're watching. So welcome, Mary. Thanks for joining me. If you want to uh, verbally, I'd be glad to answer. If not, I can uh, continue moving forward. So we'll give you a second if you want to join in. All right, that's fine. No big deal. And uh, we'll go ahead and move on. Thanks for joining in. Let's see, let me go back to presentation mode and we will see you. All right, so um, Google Photos, a uh, relatively new app uh, shot out by Google. In the past, um, their photo sharing, um, which was called Picasa, kind of worked hand in hand with uh, Google Plus. But now they created Google Photos as a, as a separate standalone um, app completely changed uh, my whole uh, outlook on photos because, man, I remember I had portable hard drives filled with thousands of photos of uh, pictures from my family, from my kids, videos, um, even when I get those uh, bootleg movies, but don't don't turn me in, please. Um, <laughs> photos is a great place to store them, and it's lightweight. I can take it. I can view anything that I have on there. I mean, I have you know, probably hundreds and hundreds of gigs or the photos and videos that I can access on my phone just by streaming, and it's a it's a great it's a great little app. Um, so one of the ways that you can get started is, especially with students, is on a uh, doing a shared shared um, shared album. Now, that's the way that I have used it with students. A shared album where you create you create the album first. You get, you drop a photo. Choose any photo that you want that, that you want to share with people, and you add it to a, a shared album. So you can create the album the first time, and once the album's created, obviously your photo, the ones that you put in there, are the first ones in, and you can share it uh, as a link. You can put it on, on social media. You can email your students that way with with, um, with a link to that shared album. Once they click on the link, they can join, and then they have they access have access just to just to that album now. I've had this question asked before. Can they see any of my other uh, my other stuff? No, they only see the photos that you shared with them. It's kind of just like a back door into one little corner of your saved photos. It's not your entire uh, your entire uh, uh, photo um, um, library. So we have a quick question here from Peggy. She says, Is it important to tag your photos in a shared album? Uh, what it does, it does automatically. When you look at it, it puts the person's name on there. So if you can look closely on my presentation, if you look closely enough at some of those screenshots, you can see that the people's names are automatically on there. So he's going to be a little knucklehead and put something appropriate. You know exactly um, who did it. So um, it, it tags it for you. Um, and one of the cool things in on a shared album, anyone who has access can now add a comment. That's where the gallery walk and jigsaw. Uh, activity comes with a shared album. It's a, it's a really cool um, feature of it that I've that I've used. Um, so I can jigsaw an entire chapter. I mean, me being a history history teacher, I'll talk about history. I'm a chapter about World War II, and I can 
there's enough information in World War II. If I want to do a quick overview of it, there's enough information in, in just World War II where I can put a whole class of 35 kids and give them their own individual part and, and um, uh, find a find a, I would say something like so I would say put uh, two to three pictures that encapsulate your title or your topic of World War II. So they 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 upload their they they search them they save them and then upload them into the uh, shared album. And what I, I tell them to do, the you, you uh, when you upload a, uh, a photo, you could be the first one to comment on it with a little quick description of what it means. And once everyone has done that part, then they do a kind of gallery walk. They you know, they're at the gallery seat. They can just sit there in the chair with their Chromebook or an iPad, and they can browse through. And I would tell them, if I have a class of 35 kids, I'm going to say, you have to go through at least uh, seven or eight um, topics and click on them and leave comments, to ask questions about um, about that photo. And the person who uploaded it becomes kind of like that uh, that, uh, that expert group, the expert on it. So if you have a question, if my if my job, my topic was um, Hitler's invasion of Poland, and someone else is uh, talking about D-Day, and I'm not really understanding what was going on in that picture, I can ask my questions, and then you start you kind of uh, sort of an academic conversation through the comment thread on each photo. So it's a it's a really fun activity, and kids will say the bell rings, they're like, oh, it's over, I wasn't done. So. You, if you uh, get that going, you, you actually leave students wanting more, and that's that, that's a very powerful thing. You leave them wanting more because the next day they want to jump back in. You really, really increase that engagement. Um, uh, my esteemed colleague Catherine Goyat will be doing a, a, a presentation later, or she's already. I'm not sure if she's done it yet. But it's called "No uh, Ditch That PowerPoint, No More Boring Presentations." And Google Photos is a really good way if you teach your students how to use the tools on there, how to really jazz up their presentations. Um, pretty much, we've all we've probably all seen a student presentation where they throw a bunch of bullets to the occasional image and they sit there and they read it to you while it's flashed up on on the projector screen. It's kind of boring, if you ask me. Now, what's a good way to really get them to be creative? Animated GIFs. Students can create animated GIFs. On Google Photos, one of the things that I've done in the past is um, I have students kind of like uh, think of like animated GIFs is like uh, think of stop motion, very similar to that. And I'll have students maybe act out a scene. So what, what I've had a student in the past one time I said, hey, you know what, your topic that you were being the expert on was Hitler's death. So I had them act out. So we had, they had a partner who would. With their camera, with their phone, took a picture of them pretending like they were committing suicide, like Hitler did, um, at least supposedly. <laughs> There's uh, the Russian said that they actually captured them, but well, uh, that's a story for another day. Where they, where he pretended to take the uh, cyanide capsule uh, with his, uh, <clears throat> with his then lover Ava Braun, and <laughs> so I showed him like you know gagging out and dying. So he, he, we, we took a burst of shots, and we used, we uploaded those pictures into Google Photos. And you select the ones that you want um, to be uh, animated, and it stitches them all together and creates animated GIF. So that kid took his GIF and kind of acting out Hitler's death and put it on his slideshow. And it was it was brilliant because now he was into it. He took ownership of it. It wasn't some GIF that he searched off the internet. But that that it's also a useful activity. But now they can create the GIFs, um, and it's real simple. Any, any photo you put into photos. You can select any ones, any number that you want to animate them. So I have a cool little example of my two oldest daughters uh, coloring, <laughs> uh, actually on the right there on the left. And I just took a burst of photos and boom. And you can, uh, once you select the ones you want, you hit the plus button, the top right corner of, of the Google Photos app or um, on, on the website. I hit animation and that sets it up for you. So uh, it's a really cool little tool to really uh, work with students. Oh man, I'm talking for a while. So if anyone has any questions, if they want to chime in, uh, now's the time, and I'll pause for a minute and let you guys uh, either tell me verbally on the on, on the physical chat or on the uh, <clears throat> if you want to send the text um, on the YouTube chat. All 
right, so I'll uh, go ahead and move forward here. So here we go. We have a, a question here from Peggy again. Let's see. Now, yes, uh, Google Apps for Education does not limit your storage. Uh, privacy restrictions, that, again, is up to your to your uh, Google Apps admin. So for my district, I'm the, the Apps admin. It kind of button stops with me when it comes to anything Google. Um, that's, uh, oh, that's kind of funny. Uh, interesting story. Um, <laughs> Well, from <clears throat> hopefully I answered your question. So the storage is completely unlimited. Uh, you, you, even your Google Drive is unlimited. Um, a story I heard about that from somebody at Google or someone who's been around longer than me said that they wanted to test how unlimited their Google Apps for Education Google Drive storage was. And I believe that someone actually put in a, a 10 terabyte file. I don't know where you would get a file like that. It took a while, but it, it stored it. So, it yeah, your storage is unlimited. Privacy again, that's that's up to your admin, your Google Apps admin. For me, I'm pretty liberal with the privacy, and I deal with it on a case by case basis. Um, but yeah, talk to your Google Apps admin. A lot of times, it's your uh, IT guys, um, and our, I'm fortunate to be the tech coach. And it's like I, I give them that kind of teacher's perspective on our Google Apps admin in their whole domain. So a lot of times the IT guys will just block a lot of things and you have to really kind of twist their arm to get them to, to do it. Um, here's my here's my trick that I've learned with the IT guys. If they're in charge of your ad, of your Google Apps domain, uh, donuts is a good way to, <laughs> to get them started. Um, I love my IT guys and when I need to get stuff done, yeah, donuts is a good uh, entry point. So yeah, hopefully I answer your question. Let's see, we have any questions here on Twitter. Got a few that I'll get to in a second, but let's go to Book Snaps. We have the Book Snaps founder over there, Tara Martin, one of the nicest people you will ever meet. It's Tara Martin. She's just absolutely amazing. She is, in my opinion, an edu superstar. She's edu famous, and you think someone that famous in any walk of life would have some sort of an ego? This is the most down to earth person I ever met. And I was so fortunate to meet her at ISD. Great experience. Of course, knowing people who know me know I'm a I take selfies with all the new people I meet, so that was a fun selfie. But, yeah, Tara Martin's amazing. Um, we have a link to the uh, brain research that she kind of did and learned from and with developing the idea of book snaps. Um, so book snaps, long story short, you're using Snapchat while you read. So you read a book and you find something that, that resonates with you or something that you have an opinion about. Take a picture with Snapchat. You use the different Snapchat tools, um, um, <clears throat> and you first use it. Well, first tool I like to use is the drawing tool. I circle the part that resonated with me. And I use a text tool to make a claim, and I use the different stickers and even my Bitmojis connected to it to kind of back up that claim. Um, you see on the left that uh, is a one of my book, one of the first book snaps I ever did when I was reading. I forget which book that was, but. Yeah, it was uh, actually, you know, that's a um, from from Launch by A.J. Giuliani and John Spencer, one of the first book snaps I ever did. So we have a question here um, about Google Photos. It says, does the app integrate with Google Classroom? Um, you know, that's a very good point. Um, it doesn't integrate the way with files do from Google Drive, but what you can do, especially when you're doing the um, – the, uh, the shared album to do it to do a, a jigsaw and a virtual gallery walk. What you can do with Google Classroom is that you, uh, when you create the shared album, you copy the link, and then you paste the link into a Google Classroom announcement or assignment. And that way, you distribute every kid gets the link and they just click on it, and they're in. So that's the way that I've used um, photos with Google Classroom. So very good question. Hopefully, I answered it. If I, if any more, feel free to, to add on. Um, book snap with Kindle Books. Brett, great, great question there. Um, yes, uh, I actually, I, I have plenty of actual physical books. But, yeah, whenever I want a book snap when I'm reading on my Kindle, what I do, I find the page, I screenshot it, and then I have it saved into my camera roll, and I can, op I can access it through Snapchat and do all the same things. So, I, actually, my best book snap, I, I think they're higher quality book snaps, when you do them through Kindle and you just screenshot that page 
because a lot of times you have to with the uh, if you're taking a picture of an actual physical book, you know the, the curvature of the page and maybe the lighting, the shadowing, you don't get a really good uh, image of your page. But when you screenshot it uh, from Kindle, it's a uh, it's amazing. So yeah, great question, Brett. Um, so we have a excuse me, sorry about that. Um, and so if you're not going to be using the Kindle book, your Kindle uh, eBooks, simply taking a picture of Snapchat. So if you own the book, you can highlight it as well, um, physically highlight it, as you see in two of the uh, example um, book snaps on this page. Um, what I've done as part of my Cardinal Innovation Center project is created a book snaps gallery. Now this is, uh, when I first learned about book snaps, my mind went straight to this. If kids are doing are taking book snaps, what um, what are we doing with them? They just take them for the sake of taking them. They turn into the teacher. The teacher sees it. Great. I want them to have that authentic audience. So what I what I do? Um, let's see here. Question here from Reba. So with book snaps, are you able to do markups for close reading? Uh, you can, definitely can, uh, with uh, some of the uh, Snapchat tools. Um, I would uh, say, um, yeah, you totally could. I have a few other ideas of how you can uh, do close reading. I, I did a session yesterday um, called Ditch That Copier using uh, uh, PDFs, where you can, uh, a tool called uh, Doc Hub through Google Drive that is very good for, uh, mar for uh, marking the text and close reading. So if you want to connect with me later, um, Reba, uh, find me on Twitter at TechCoachWattis. Um, and I can share with you some resources I have for, for digitally marking the text for close reading. So um, I would say in theory you can with with Snapchat doing book snaps. I wouldn't recommend it for that activity, but technically you could. So again, uh, connect with me on Twitter, and uh, we'll uh, <clears throat> go ahead and uh, 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 share some ideas. So the book snaps gallery, which is a big part of my Cardinal Innovation Center, uh, um, Ariba, it's called Doc Hub. Doc Hub is a third-party app through Google Drive. Um, so yeah, Doc Hub. So um, if you go to, um, if you try to open up a PDF file in um, in Google Drive, it says open with, and Doc Hub can be part of your list already. If not, it says connect more apps, search for Doc Hub, and you can open it there. So great questions. So back to the book snaps gallery. So what I do, I have students can create their book snaps with their phones on Snapchat. Or they can do it with Google Drawings or Slides. All they have to do is just take a picture of their book with their webcam, and they can import that image into a slide or Google Drawing Canvas. And all the same things you pretty much you can do with uh, book snaps. You can do on uh, Snapchat. You can do on slides or, or drawings. And what I do with kids when they take a snap a book snap with either Snapchat or they have it on on Google Drawings, they will. I have a Google form that I, I put out to them. Um, that they can upload their, their their book snaps through that form, and I will then curate them um, by subject or topic and on the book snaps gallery. So if you ever, uh, there's a link on this uh, called um, to the Carlin Innovation Center. It takes you to the book snaps gallery. As you see a screenshot of it right there, and um, all you got to do is just click there. And I have it by grade level and by subject. So the one that probably got used the most was our Ninth and tenth grade ELA, you know, some of the novels they did. They're reading Bless Me Ultima and To Kill a Mockingbird, and then they went pretty crazy with the with the book snaps. It was awesome to see that um, one of our really uh, young, innovative teachers, Amy Williams, would do book snaps for every chapter. Um, so my book snaps gallery is kind of for the whole school, but you, as your indiv as an individual classroom teacher, you can create your own book snaps gallery, where, where the students submit their book snaps to you. You take the ones that you think are the best and put them on there for kids to learn from. So if there's a student that's absent and they missed, you know, chapter four of To Kill a Mockingbird, they can you direct them to that website, to that gallery, and they can see what their peers have read and their opinions about it. So they can have an idea of what's going on in the book to help them to stay up to date. Um, even for the next school year, before you read the book, you can do a, a nice little gallery walk there of all the book snaps from that, um, uh, uh, from the previous year's class. The previous year's class is sharing their learning with the kids in the future. So it's a, it's a really great way to, to display student work. <clears throat> all 
on the sketch notes. Uh, yeah, sketch notes are, man, my favorite way of taking notes. And the great thing about sketch notes is that you don't need to be a good artist. I have horrible fine motor skills. My my handwriting is terrible. Some people say I should have been a doctor. My handwriting is so so horrible. Um, <laughs> so just take a look at the two images you see there on the left. You know, the one on the left versus the one on the right. Which one would you rather look at? If I'm a student who reviewed my notes, you know, while I'm studying, which one would I rather see? I'm definitely going to want to see the one on the right. You know, as a history teacher for years, I would I would collect student notes as part of their grade. And you know, I'd review them, see that they're taking the correct notes, really I'd give them feedback on how to take notes better. And, and more often than not, it was what you see there on the left. Man, I hated looking through those notes, reading students' bad handwriting. But now, as I'm going to dip my foot back in the classroom for two periods for the next next semester, kids, I, 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 I don't want to see the notes on the left. I want them doing sketch notes. Because there they have really taken ownership of their notes. They're they're adding things that they're adding a, they're 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 personalizing their notes. I mean, yeah, you can technically do that on a notebook with just with just words, but I want those those uh, visual representations of their ideas and connecting ideas using connectors, using arrows and color coding to really uh, really get deeper inside their brain to really improve comprehension. So it's um, yeah, I absolutely love sketch notes. In a similar fashion that I've uh, I've created the book snaps gallery, we also have a sketch notes gallery. Kids were in my sketch notes gallery displays student work. Their student their student creates sketch notes, and what they do, same way, I have it curated by by grade level and by um, <clears throat> by subject. And then you click on, let's say for example, you want go to the uh, CongressInnovationCenter.org. Uh, there's a link right there on this page, and all you gotta do is say click on 11th grade, go to social studies. Our, I got this up and running last April when our US history uh, class was talking about the causes of the Vietnam War. What they did, they, they, they went in there and they would, the teacher would have them do that. He had an old presentation that he had them sketch note about the causes of the war. And they would submit the actual paper sketch notes to me. And the ones that <clears throat> I thought were the, were the best, um, I scanned them and I took the scanned sketch notes and I paste it and I uh, displayed them on uh, on that page. Um, so on that page for U.S. history, 11th grade or 11th grade, then you go to U.S. history. There's a topic a topic page there. It says a cause of the Vietnam War. You click on that page and boom, it shows you all the sketch notes that, that were uh, I, that I deemed at that time worthy. And next year's this upcoming year students when they get to that part of the curriculum. That teacher can now, uh, before they even start learning about it, say, here, let's review last year's students' learning. And they can learn from each other. Um, one of the great things is having students learn from each other. Um, you know, I've seen this uh, firsthand um, with my own daughters. My, my oldest daughter, Ashley, she is brilliant. She uh, photographic memory. She's just smart as a whip. She figures out everything. I mean, she was four months old. She already knew how to swipe on an iPad. And she figured that, figured that out on her own. I didn't even teach her. But, you know, I really worked with her, reading to her, and just doing everything that you would expect a good parent to do. And I'm just so proud of how intelligent she is. And my second daughter, Ariel, I almost felt guilty because I didn't I didn't really uh, spend as much time as I did with Ashley. And even when you have two kids, it's, you're stretched out farther. But I didn't see any deficits in Ariel because Ariel was learning from her older sister. And... That, I guess it's kind of human nature that we learn from each other so well. And um, uh, using sketch notes and book snaps and, sh and sharing the previous year's st uh, students' work with, them, with each year coming on after, it's a great way to get student that part of human nature that we learn from each other so well. I mean, you know what? Some kid, for whatever reason, may not even like you as a teacher, can't stand you, and they will intentionally not learn from you. But they'll learn from their peers. And this is a great way to take to have peer-to-peer uh, -peer learning uh, opportunities. All right, <clears throat> I'll stop pontificating. So we'll uh, <clears throat> we'll finish up this this uh, presentation. Um, well, last slide here is about rocking that webcam. This is probably a device that does not get. It's pretty, in my experience, has been very underutilized um, in education. Whether it's the webcam on your on your iPad or a Chromebook or a laptop. Um, 
very powerful, but just using pictures. Um, one of the first ways I've, I've used, I, I enjoy using the webcam, uh, I started doing it, uh, a little project that we're going to call Math Blogs. Um, I'm a history guy. ELA comes easy to me. Science and history can go really well together. Math, I know that for me, that's a completely, totally uh, foreign concept. Um, so I was thinking, how can I get some more technology and writing into math? So I had this idea where, you know what? Why don't we have students use the webcam, take pictures of their work, then blog about it. So we started every kid, we, we went to blogger.com, it's connected to their Google Apps for Education. Going on here, Amazon Assistant. I don't want that. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Let me get back here. Let me get back in my soapbox here. All right, let's see, almost back in business. All right, there we go. We got them to blogger.com, which is part of their Google Ads for Education um, accounts for each of the students. Um, so if you don't have that right now as part of your account, go to whoever your Google Apps admin and say, hey, turn on Blogger. Um, it's free. Very simple to use. If you type a Google Doc, you can work with Blogger. All the tools are virtually the same. Um, <clears throat> So Peg with the question, do they need a webcam to take pictures of their work? Um, yes and no. Um, it's probably the, um, if you, you have devices without webcams, they can technically take a picture with their phone and do it that way. But um, the webcam is built in, whatever is built into your, uh, to your device is, is what I'm referring to. I hope I answered your question. Um, so we have an example of, of, a, of a math blog here where uh, a good did a, a student of mine, uh, his name is Devon, uh, very fun, funny kid. We have some, some cool inside jokes, the two of us. But Devon, what he would do, they were working on in math class on, on dot plots. So the teacher gave him a task, and he worked it out on his paper. And I tell them, hey, when you're going to take a picture of your work, make sure you write big enough and you write neat enough so we can read it. So he solved the problem and then wrote, you know, a, I said, you write, give me at least a paragraph of, of your uh, your rationale behind uh, what you did. So a lot of people say, how do I get right into math? Here you go. Have them take pictures of their work, maybe one, two problems at a time, and write those rationales as a blog. Um, as a teacher, what, what you can do to manage this, you can create your own Google site for free and make a page for each class you have. And it takes a little bit of setup and some work, but once you have it, it makes doing the math blog so easily, so much easier. So what you do, <coughs> excuse me, you uh, <coughs> you put your roster, you type every kid's name is on, on that page, and what the, you, you do, you get the student's math blog URL, and then you link it to their name on the website. It takes a little bit of work, but once you get it done, it's automated. So so if you have, you've assigned um, students to write, to write a, a, blog, a math blog post on their math blog, all you got to do is go to your website that you have set up with every kid's name on it, click on that student's name, and boom, it shows you if they've done the work. It shows you with the time and the date that they've, they've posted it, um, and you can see um, or what they've done, read the rationale. So you're getting kids uh, some writing into a math class. All by It all started using the webcam. So <clears throat> that's a fun little, little one we've done. Another one we did, we added some screencasting. <laughs> into the mix. Um, I had a sixth grade math class who was a teacher. She was kind of, you know, pulling her hair out that these kids, man, uh, they talk a lot. She, was like, she actually told me, come and do something that makes them shut up. I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that. I go, how about we do that? How, how about we put their talking, we leverage their, their talking skills and put that talking skills to work. So we put them in groups of two or three kids, and what they would do, they would work out the math problems. And instead of making a math blog, they would put the picture of their work on a Google Doc. And then they would start typing below their image, again, the rationale. So, so now, once it's, it's very similar to the math blog, except now we're going to use a, a Chrome extension called Screencastify, where they can now record their screen and their voice and make a video. So what they're going to do 
is now not only are they going to you, you can see what they've done, they've written about it, now they have to speak. So we're really working on that listening and speaking. So they would screencast, pretty much explain a picture of their work. So they go step by step, they explain the rationale all by speaking. And then when, once they're done uh, recording, they upload their video into YouTube. So what this teacher did, there was eight different problem types with eight different groups, she jigsawed it. And every kid, every uh, group uploaded their, their video to YouTube. We, we made a, um, a playlist where all the kids now can now go in and see all the other different problem types and they learn from each other. So again, they rock, They start off by rocking that, that webcam, taking a picture of their work, they rationalized about it, they wrote about it, and then they spoke. So it was a, a fun day. So again, it's Screencastify plus Google Docs, a cool little app smash. So if you want any more questions about that, I can definitely uh, off the air uh, field some questions. But that brings us to the end of our presentation. Um, hope you guys learned a, a thing or two. Uh, if you have any questions, you have any feedback for me, some constructive criticism, I am open to it. Um, so I'll stay on just for a few minutes here to be, field any questions uh, out loud or in the chat. Stop, uh, stop sharing my screen right here. So I'm back here. All right. So let's see. Well, thanks, Peggy, uh, for joining. Uh, all your great comments and questions have been great. Thanks again, uh, everybody. We had LG. Oh, L Gleaming. All right. Yes, thanks for uh, for joining me, uh, Reba, little Brett. If I got everybody. So, um, yeah, again, uh, connect with me on uh, – on Twitter, that's probably the best way to get a hold of me, at Tech Coach Waters, and uh, I respond very quickly, and we can uh, form this uh, collaborative, collaborative, collaborative relationship and uh, continue to learn from each other. So uh, I'll stay on for a few minutes, and then I'll be back again at five. This will be my fifth presentation <sighs> to um, talk about uh, some tech coaching. Catherine Goyan and I will be talking about how, how to deal with tech resistant teachers. Uh, so we're uh, kind of our thing that we do. So uh, if you wanna talk to us later, at, uh, well, let's see, yeah, in an hour, an hour from now, Catherine and I will be, um, uh, will be online talking about dealing with tech resistant teachers. So if you're a, kind of a tech lead at your school or a tech coach, teachers who don't wanna, don't wanna jump online, jump on board with, uh, Using tech and the four C's, we have some some tips, some some uh, some war stories that we can share to help you work with those people. So, thanks for joining, and uh, hopefully, I'll see you guys back again in an hour. <laughs>